couple of months ago, QuickBooks Online added this receipts feature that you see under banking. So you're going to see three tabs, banking, rules, and receipts. And then once you click on receipts, you're basically going to see three boxes, which are certainly uh, your instructions. They're saying there's three ways you can add receipts into QuickBooks Online. One, you can just simply come into this module and drag and drop a PDF, a scanned version of the invoice and the receipt, and just push it up there. And all you have to do is drag and drop it, and that's it, or browse your computer, and that's it. The second way you can do it is you have to register your email. And what happens is any emails that come from your email mailbox to QuickBooks, uh, sorry, receipts at quickbooks.com is going to automatically queue it up into this section. So you can forward something that came via email, whether it's a PDF receipt or just if the receipt's in the body, because right? you can have, you know, sort of financial information within the body of the text. So you just forward that to that email and then QuickBooks will organize that email as a receipt. And the third one would be to open up your uh, iPhone app, your Android app, and snap the picture from there. So I'm going to walk you through all three and what the workflow looks uh, afterwards. So let's start with the QBO phone app. And this is where most people, I believe, um, it's, are, it's gonna, they're going to start the process of adding receipts. And most likely, this is what QuickBooks was thinking about when they, uh, when they put this together. So you're going to open up your phone app, okay? And then you're going to have a button on the bottom right, which is a plus sign that allows you to create a new transaction. And there's going to be sort of the, the side menu on the left side where you can see all your options. So if you click on the side menu, it's, it's, it's right at the top, right under home. It says uh, receipt capture. So if you looking at my phone here for a minute, see if this will let you, you will click on that little uh, symbol up here and that will... Um, that will open up that side menu, right? and then you just click on receipt capture. So that's one way to get to it. The other way to get to it is right here in the bottom, there's a little plus sign that when you open it, it opens up a menu of all the things you can do uh, you know, with that little plus sign. So in that place, you click on receipt capture on your phone, and the minute you hit receipt capture, your uh, webcam turns on, right? So once your webcam turns on, you can just put... Uh, obviously put the receipt on the desk, take a picture of the receipt. The next step, if you took an awkward picture, like an angled picture or something like that, it will give you the ability to sort of reshape that box. So QuickBooks knows how to read it in what direction, if it's angled, because you know God knows what kind of crazy things people will take pictures of on top of the receipt, right? And then the, the software is trying to figure out what's surrounding it. So the idea is that you enclose what QuickBooks essentially is reading. And within uh, that enclosure, QuickBooks is just going to limit their search of information within that box. Um, as soon as it's done, it's going to say, hey, the receipt has been uploaded. And then you can hit done, move forward, or capture another receipt. So that's the phone app. Once the receipt gets um, gets up, whether it gets uploaded or forwarded or added through the phone app, all the things are going to come in into the processing box. And that's just telling you at uh, what time a receipt was being captured and what the current queue is. Now, in this uh, in this queue, in, in, in some cases, we are dealing with um, we are dealing with uh, 50 minute wait time. But I, in my experience, it's been about I would say more or less about a five minute wait time i think it's going really fast i'm not sure if anybody else using it has a different uh, opinion on how long this is taking but it's taking about five minutes now as the software gets more sophisticated and hopefully their computing power gets better and better the wait time will be less now why is there a wait time because quickbooks is attempting to decipher the receipt and it's attempting to parse the information for you so you can apply some rules or something like that and at some point uh, be able to uh, sort of semi-automate the process. So once the receipts are are, are, are processed per se, they're going to be in the for review section inside that receipts tab. The workflow is very similar to, to bank feeds and it'll give you, uh, basically it'll show you, sometimes it'll show you a little preview of it, sometimes it doesn't depending on, 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 on 
the quality of it and then it'll give you the transaction date the description it actually tries to figure out which of your vendors it matches to it's not perfect but it's not bad um it will also it will draw the dollar amount it's actually pretty good at drawing the dollar amount and in some cases it will capture the the source account correctly but again you can't really trust it you have to look at the document and see what the source account is at this stage it does not look at pending transactions in your bank feeds it will look at transactions that were already entered into your register, but it will not look at any pending transactions in your bank feed. So that's, that's where the break of workflow potentially is. I don't know if they're ever gonna get to the point where they'll work with bank feed sim simultaneously, but these two things don't work together. Once it's pushed through bank feeds, then it'll attempt to do matching, but it won't do any matching pre uh, entered into the register. So at this point, you choose which transaction you want to enter. You click on review. It'll pop up the screen where in the left side, you'll get a PDF preview of the email that you forwarded. In this case, this is an email that I forwarded. That's an email that I got from one of my vendors. I uh, forwarded to, to QuickBooks and you see it right there. It'll try to parse some information out. Like for example, it, 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 it got the, the total dollar amount correct. That was actually picked up from the receipt. It picked up a description, so it did get close to the vendor's name. That's not the actual vendor's name. The vendor's name is Sweetwater, so it missed the T for some weird reason. Um, it, had, it assumes the category. Look, it, it sent it into utilities because it's got the word water in it. Um, and it picked up the date. I think it did that correctly. And really, that's, that's kind of where it stopped. So then at that point, you have to confirm what it is, right? Select the payee, the source account, the date, the category, add some additional memo if you want to. And then you have the option to hit save and close and it adds that into the register or click on save and next and it will go to the sort of the next receipt that's pending in the queue. Okay, so then once you click either save and close or save and next, um, QuickBooks will take you to the next screen, which is basically confirming that I went ahead and created a new transaction, a brand new transaction to the register that does not match an existing transaction. So there's one more step for you to click on create step and pretty much what you're doing at that point is you're confirming, you're saying, yes, I am okay with you creating a new transaction into my register. So in this case, there was no matching uh, because the transaction didn't is, exist in the register already. So I clicked on create expense and it added it. So then let's say I open up bank feeds and there's a potential duplication here. This is where this feature could become a, a potential problem, you know, because if, if it's not, if they're not talking to each other, you could potentially create the transaction twice. In this case, I used the receipt feature to create the new transaction and push it into the register. And then because it's already in my register, it will do the matching in bank feed. So I think this is the best workflow is to start with receipts and then allow the bank feeds to match. Although there is a reverse uh, way of matching, which I'll show you in a second, but that is how I recommend to do it. Bring the receipt, create a transaction, then match it through bank feeds. Okay, all right, so let's say it goes the other way. Let's say that I went into bank feeds and I added it to transaction first before the receipt came into play. Or I went into my check register and I created the transaction manually, again, before the receipt comes to play. Somebody uploads the receipt and then if that receipt matches an existing transaction, this is on the receipt portion, it would actually tell you, hey, it looks like there's already a transaction that mimics this dollar amount. Now, assuming you read the dollar amount correct, of course, that's a, that's a really important piece of this whole thing. And at that point, you have the choice to either confirm the match, like if it makes sense to you, you can confirm the match, and then nothing will happen. Basically, the receipt will now be attached to the existing transaction, and that's it. Or you can click on, on review, um, and then at that point, decide what you're gonna do before you match it. So once you go into the review uh, page, like in this case, I clicked on review, it's actually now showing me the specific transaction inside uh, QuickBooks already that is trying, to, attempting to match it too. So now I can look at the receipt, or the image or the forwarded email, whatever it happens to be, and the transaction, and I can I can match it. There's a little drop down menu. I don't think I, I added a screenshot of that, but next to match, where you can instead of matching, create a new transaction if the match was wrong in the first place. Because it could be the case 
where the match is just not uh, correct. That's possible, right? So, I mean, this system is brand new. There might, might be mistake prone. So you may want to double check that, you know, the matching is being done uh, correctly. Now, if you have additional QuickBooks users um, that you want them to be capturing receipts, because usually it could be more than one person capturing receipts, you have to um, add them as a user inside uh, QuickBooks Online, right? Every user has to click on register your email. So when they log in, they're going to go into the screen and they're going to click on register your email. The minute they click on register your email, um, uh, QuickBooks now knows that their email is an email that they will capture and forward uh, the receipt to the screen. Now, it needs to be a QuickBooks Online standard user. So you have to have if you have like 10 people capturing receipts and you want each of them to have a different login, you're going to have to be working with QuickBooks Online Advanced or something like that. So you can have all those advanced users capturing receipts and they need to have at least access to vendors. So if they, if they don't have all access, if they have limited access, they need to have access to vendors for them to be able to uh, use the receipt capture feature. That's not documented anywhere. It's just something that you kind of discover it to try and error at this point. So um, as soon as the user has been added, has access to vendors, and they click on that button that says register your email, it will say you're good to go. Any emails coming from whatever that email address is from to receipts at quickbooks.com will go to this box. The only challenge I see with this is what if you are a user of multiple QuickBooks online accounts and you're registered to, towards multiple QuickBooks Online accounts, how is QuickBooks going to know which account to send it to? I don't think they have addressed that yet. So that's the current deficiency that this has. So as accounting professionals that we have access to 100 accounts, you know, we're not going to be able to capture receipts in our client's behalf from a phone app. We would have to upload the document from the web app where we know which um, account we're logged into. And that's it with, uh, with the receipts. Now I'm going to switch over to uh, the live screen here, and I'll take any questions at this point, any questions, comments.